Yo, check this out. One. It's your boy DJ Script. You know what I'm saying? We live on Lodging with Script. You know what I mean? Yo, listen. This is a very uh, special uh, edition, a special uh, episode, a special show. Why? Because this show is called Zoes in the Industry. So it's a very special show because of that. And we have the homie uncut art in the building and we're gonna go through some stuff we're gonna talk about you know his beginning we're gonna talk about you know what makes him uh, a very special awe in the city of new york um the way he move and what makes him very elusive you understand what i mean so we're gonna we're gonna dive into this you know what i mean so this is take one take two is coming up right now so we're gonna get right into it yo what's up uncut what up, man? What's going on? You're in the building, right? We lit. We live and we in here. Yo, listen. I was put on to you a while back, about like three, four years ago, if not longer than that. But every time I was supposed to go meet you, uh, something happened. As a matter of fact, I remember last time I was supposed to go meet you at a Spike Lee joint, but it was so crowded, and I didn't get the chance to meet you. Um, now... I released a film, the Haitian Polo documentary, which I produced, by the way, and that film immediately caught your attention. Yes. And from that point on, we started building. Yes. And I find out you're a very cool guy because not too many industry dudes are cool. Some of them are extremely insecure. (laughs) Right? Don't you think so? Extremely. Extremely. So now, your name is Uncut. What inspired you to call yourself Uncut? Uncut art. Uncut. Well, inspired by by just knowing who I was and and not it's like to me, uncut is raw. It's just straight from the heart. It's pure. You know, and, and I consider myself raw. It's not refined. At all. It's just what you, what you see is what you get. And then some. You know what I'm saying? And because I'm so non physical a lot of the shit that you get, you're not even going to see it coming. Okay, so elusive. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the, that's where that word came, came oh, in. Yeah. Now, now with, with, that, with that said, man, um, when I got put on to you, I kind of did a, you know my little research on you, and I seen you've been around the industry. Like, I, I really don't want to put you on the spot, but I seen you work with, uh, with Spike Lee, yeah. Um, Jamie Fox. Yeah, I seen you in many movies like uh, Carlitos Way. Um, oh. She gotta have it now. How did you get yeah. your start? And Bronx Tale. And Bronx Tale. Yeah. Damn, Bronx Tale, Carlitos Way. She gotta have it. Belly. Be- oh, Belly. <laughs> Belly is an urban classic, my man. Yeah, I, that was my first. That was the first movie I, I actually was a casting director agent on that movie. A zoo in the industry. <laughs> yeah. Yo, ring the bell. Where's the bell? Yeah, I was. Oh I my was, god! I came in as like an intern, right? Learn um just as an intern in the casting department. Oh, hold then, up, let's go back because they were making noise in the background. Repeat what you said. I'm saying that for a reason. Hey, Casey. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Oh, oh, oh. in the industry. True. There you go. Wow. Okay. Wow, this is crazy. So, See? so this right Small here, world, right? this right here was the first movie that I worked on when I started working in films. That's and crazy. I, and I started as an intern, and come mid movie, I was like, they actually hired me as um, one of the casting agents um, for the for the agency. They and, hired you as a casting agent. Yeah, and that was that was belly. Well, hold up, let's unpack this, man. But so so check this out. You were hired as a casting. Director or a casting member? And I was um I worked on the casting department as oh, you a casting the ca- agent. How did you get that? Okay, my bad. Not director, agent. Yeah. Now, how did you get that that gig? Yo, I went in as an intern, like literally. On how some, long did you intern for? Half the film. Come, come, like I'll say, like seventy percent of the film, and then, you know, oh, I was slow down. Up. Slow down. Okay. Now, first and foremost, this is a major production. <laughs> It Do you was, know the level was, of maturity you have to have I was a, in order I was for baby. people to trust you to allow you to be a casting agent? Now, so you basically telling me you don't play games. The minute you step in the door, 
you're extremely serious. Yeah, I wasn't immature. playing. Immature. Yeah, I wasn't playing. They, oh. they actually noticed that shit because the funny thing is one of the producers was like, so they actually paying me, um, like, you know how they gave per diems to come, to come in? So that's how ill you were. Yeah, because I was an intern, but I was just like, y'all. But what were you interning interning to do? Like, what was your intern? A, a casting job? agent to okay, to work with okay. um to work with all the talent. Okay, so you met Nas, you met yeah, the yeah, Max. Yeah, yeah, I worked with X. Yeah, I Method was, Man and all these guys. Yeah, yeah, I, okay, yeah. well, how is Method Man like on the set? Method is cool, but like I was wor I was working more with with X. You know, to work so how's X, I know X is a cool dude. How was yeah, X? X was cool. X was did you guys get to you know burn yeah, the split? Oh, we did. We did. We did. Burn a lot of split, huh? <laughs> we did. We what did. about Nas? How's Nas? Nas, I didn't get to really like vibe with Nas. Cause but you used to see him. Though. Yeah, of course. We seen everybody. You know what I'm saying? And then as a casting agent coming in, so in the industry, you yeah, playing with us. Yeah, as coming in as a casting agent, I was more like trying to learn this shit. So I wasn't. I wasn't trying to be in nobody's face. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, I, I had so to be in X face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you know the first thing I learned in, as a casting agent, bro? Like, I went on set, and I seen a director just straight screaming on somebody. Really? And I'm from the hood. And screaming? They, and I don't get screamed on. Yeah, they, you know they, they tend to want to do that a lot in the industry. So they, now, so now I, why this, do they no, do no, that? But listen to this, though. Listen to this, this to what I learned. Right, so this this um director is screaming on I guess a PA because he did something wrong or whatever. But number one, so now okay, let me I'll tell you the rest of the story later. Anyway, so he screamed on him, and I'm looking at the shit like damn, you're like, like damn, you're like, hey, you don't disrespect him like that, and uh, dude, he's not gonna do anything. So my man pulled me to the side. He was like, yo, this is production. Nobody takes nothing personal here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's under pressure. I noticed somewhere. that about the industry. You know industry. what I'm saying? He's like, everybody's under pressure. And and later on, you're going to see them two guys going to be sitting down, drinking, and chilling together because he ain't taking that personal. And that's the first thing I learned is never you take, take shit, shit personal. personal. Stop playing. You ain't yeah. screaming on me. Well, you on set, you don't take shit personal at <laughs> all. You don't take nothing personal because the screaming is not really on you. It's just a frustration that the director, whoever, might have. And production be costly, you know what I'm saying? Especially back then, a production yeah, was like five hundred thousand dollars. So man, you do, you fuck up a day's production, that's a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? So, so I learned that even though somebody might scream on you on set, it ain't personal. It's part of the job. Man, so I kind of took that in. It was like, some, okay, cool. I learned that. Sometimes this sucker is trying to scream on you to demonstrate dominance, man. I mean, that's <laughs> like, but then I, this is what it was though. Yeah, it his no, is right back then. Right now, it's 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 flat out. You know what it is. But back then, it used Everybody to be accepted. Now, it used to be accepted because everybody wanted a job. Because it, it, it was like, yo, just, if this nigga scream on you, just don't take it personal. Just let him yeah, have his know. let him have his win. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Keep it moving because it ain't got nothing to do with you. Because it never really had anything to do, do with you. It was just that motherfucking the way he was. That's 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 dope, man. Uh, so you're a casting agent doing internship. You work in yeah. Bronx Town. Are you working? Oh, the funny uh, thing is, Bronx Tech was before Belly. Before Bronx Tech was, yeah, I went in I as an actor. I just wanted to do them. Yeah, I just went in as an actor for Bronx Tech. I wanted, okay. to, be, I, I wanted to be in a motherfucker as a character because okay. it was, it was one of the characters that I really wanted to be. I like, yo, that, that guy that got beat up, that was my, like, shorty brother. That's who I went in for. And you did, she got to have it. Now, she yeah, got to have it with shot in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, and, and, and Martha's Vineyard. And Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, yeah. Now, how was it working with Spike Lee? It was it was tough, but it was dope because well, Spike he, is a tough person to work. It was, but because he fucking challenged your ass. Okay, that's dope. I, he, I love a challenge. Man. As long as the challenge come with respect, he he, he got nothing but love. You okay, know what I'm saying? He's not even respect. He's a family that he works. He got for nothing him. but love, and and he's all about the work. You know what I'm saying? And he wants to see the best out of you. So even if you don't know what that is, he knows that's what dope. that is because that's, that's what the fuck he hired you pro. for. Okay. So, okay, because yeah. I have a family member that works with that dude, but I works with him. He had night cool. That's dope. So that was that was a dope experience. So with and that the, industry, he was driven by shit. You know what I'm saying? Driven by what kind of shit? By by their by their by their their their. It's like this one thing to accomplish more and more, or they're driven by so they money, get greedy. or they're driven by <laughs> fame. Or they they driven. <laughs> well, sometimes it's not greed because a lot of people just want to create the more. They want to be the Michael Jordan. Want to be the again. best, or just want to keep creating more. Either or, it's okay. and some or people they are be driven. The only one. Yeah, but they're driven by something, right? And sometimes 
a lot of that shit get in the way of humanity within people. So you know what I'm saying? okay, now to me you are you are in a an industry person. So I'm gonna ask you this question. I'm gonna pick you back off of what you said. Yeah. What are you driven by in terms of being in the industry or part of it all around it? I'm around it because my family is in it right now. Uh, I'm, me, I'm for what I do yeah, with the art and the spirituality situation. I'm driven by me and my growth and everything that I learned to make me better. I want to share it with people because I want to see the better version of everybody every day. That's all that is with me, you know. Okay. okay. And I know, and I know what I do works. Now, I, I I was going through your stuff not now back then, and I see your your journey. Protect your heart is, you know, graffitied all over New York City. And I'm like, hmm, this guy's everywhere. And then when I find out you were Haitian, I was even more like blown away. When I find out you were Azo, I'm like, what? Azo doing that? This is crazy. I gotta meet this kid. Yeah. Now Azo doing that. Azo <laughs> doing that's right. Now let me ask you a question. What sparked that movement? Like, you know, protect your heart. Is man, it something that happened? Shit to that you? we're talking about in the industry, man. Like twenty years ago there was no love in the industry. Niggas ain't know what love is. Is there love we... now? Yeah, hell yeah. Hell so that's yeah. what that's what sparked you to create. Hell you know? yeah. Niggas see it. You know what I'm saying? Even if people don't let me know that they, they got inspired by it, but I think I have but the goal the, the goal was there you go. Yeah, the drip the report. Goal. Yeah, right. We we're gonna do the drip report today. Drip report. But you didn't come with your jacket because you got some dope jackets. I came and, with the dope bag. Well, you came with the bag. We still could do a minor drip report. Yo, this bag is is I have to protect your high cookies. Yeah, this bag is this bag is is is, is lit. Okay. Can can you can I get can I get a can I get a bag like this, man? Of course, we we get your bag. I'm dead serious. I want a bag no, we like gotta this. Hit cookies up, man. We, gotta, we get cookies to this, throw back. This in. this bag is unique, and I and I go out most of the time. I would love to have it, especially with the you know a protect your heart all over because the this whole one, city. This knows one's protect this. your this one's protect your heart though. Oh, protect it, your it, heart. It's well, smell proof. It got all that, all that. <laughs> protect your heart. This is, is all amazing. All the high I like shit. that. Yeah, I like that. So, um, definitely, I want to protect your heart, not the high. Uh, although I'm into uh, cannabis and trying to sell it, I don't smoke it, but I want to sell it. But uh, I want to protect your heart. This is dope, man. Thank and you. I have some dope young people for you to meet, man. And um, hopefully, you come back to the show. I already told some of my people that I'm going to introduce you to them. And uh, we're gonna do some things. Uh, yeah, they're man, just like you know your heart, man. Tell them to protect yeah, your they, heart. Yeah, they, 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 y'all gonna blend perfectly, especially with my homie Saint. Uh, he's an artist, and you guys have a similar aura. That's oh. that's that's very dope, man. So now, so now let's get back to the question. What's up? I asked you what ignited. The whole yeah, protect your heart take movement. A lot, a lot of stuff, man. I'll tell you, there was no love in the industry, bro. Okay, no, so you felt no like love. you needed love. I me, mean, I didn't need love, bro. You it felt was like, like people needed love. People was constantly telling me that you can't, you can't do nothing with love. Like you know how you show people love, and they don't show it back to you. Tell me about it. Not you know just, how much well, love that I show? part. That part, but you know how you show people love, and then a person will be like, "Yo, why are you showing them love? They ain't do nothing for you." Or like, somebody would tell me, don't client. show nobody no love because they, you know, like love ain't going to pay your bills. I like, show so many like people I, love. Like I'll, do, like, I'll do, like I'll do a painting for somebody because okay. they don't have the funding. You know what I'm saying? But somebody would come to me and be like, well, you know, I don't know why you did it for free. You know, they could afford it, did that. But I'm like, yo, but like, why are you all in people's pockets, right? And, 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 and it's just that whole concept of love can't buy you shit. Thing that I was really like saying, now nah, that's bullshit. Y'all niggas don't know true, what love though. is, because y'all don't go stick because then niggas don't know what love is. Love is powerful. So, they ain't know what love is, so if I was you, like, yo, I gotta show them what love is. I gotta go out there and and put this reminder because love have a lot to do with understanding what, who you who you are. Some people don't so, even understand themselves. Yes, but that's what protect your heart was. That's protect your heart was love. a flashback to yourself, a bridge that connected you with you that you didn't even know was it even existed sometimes because we're too busy running chasing some shit that is obtainable because it belongs to us and it comes to us, but we too busy chasing the shit that is chasing us sometimes. Well, in terms of you, you know, displaying or giving somebody love and support and they don't give it back to you, 
my brother, you speaking to the choir. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people uh, I show love to. I, you know, I support. Some of them even, they, they even, my energy is too much for them. They can't even digest it. And for some reason, they don't give me back that love. Well, it depends they, what you do stuff for. Because sometimes this is the other shit that I got that says love for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, give love, not expecting nothing back. And keep it moving. Exactly. Some you don't expect anything back, but they think you want something back, and because of some, you know, there's many different reasons to why people behave the way they do. Sometimes it's insecurity. Sometimes it's bad things that happen to them in their life, and they traumatize. And because of that, they become very skeptical of other human beings. Um, they don't trust people. Uh, you know that makes them. Um, very introvert in terms of people being around them and stuff like that. So there's a there's a whole bunch of different reasons to why people act like that. But me personally, I think love, like you said, is is something that is very powerful. Yep. And um and you have to stretch within to find it. And when you have it, you can give it to the world. But now what I'm realizing with love and support, you have to be careful who you give these things to. Yeah, that's why protect your heart. You got to protect your energy. That's all that's Oh, true. man, we just did a 360. <laughs> we just did a 360. Protect your heart and, uh, and, 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 and be careful who you give it to, man. That's yeah. extremely important. Protect so, your energy. That's all. So now we're going we're gonna to jump to the other level of, of this uh, conversation. Yeah. Now, you are Zoe, right? I see you rep that 24-7. I was, I was born there. You were born in Haiti or over here? I was born in Haiti, bro. I you in, were born I, in Haiti? I was born in Port-au-Prince. I swear I thought you were born here in Brooklyn or Harlem somewhere. Stop playing. I'm a prince, bro. Really? You were born in Port-au-Prince? Listen, prince, wait, Zoe in the industry. Zoe's mm-hmm. in the industry. This is why you were born. You were born in Haiti. So you I were was, born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I was born, yep. I'm a prince. Oh, you're a prince. I was born at the Port of Prince. Wow. No, so what does it mean to you? That what? To be a zoo in the industry. To be honest with you, man. To be you want me frank with you? Yeah, be frank with me. I like realness. Fuck the industry. <laughs> or to at least to be a zoo that was in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Why now? Because, why do you say that? Because everybody that's in the industry is part of something that we call the world, which is everybody as a whole. You know what I'm saying? And when we talk about separation, this industry, that industry, this industry, I'm like, but as a whole, we We are a community, right? We are are a community that are creative ass motherfuckers that will put our here to create more chances and more opportunities and more this and more that and more this for more people. So when we talk about being a zone industry, it's like, bro, like like being a zoo in this in this entire world, it, it means so much because Absolutely. it's like and, and and being a zoo as a creator too because it's like the blood that runs through my vein, bro, is it's the same deeper. blood that 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 that's responsible for the beginning of this whole freedom nation and 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 ab- abolish slavery and all that shit. Oh, it's man, like it's like yeah man we're going now. all the way back you there going, because my ancestors speak because okay. i speak I through my you. ancestors and they speak through me because the whole shit i'm doing protect your heart which is freeing yourself from yourself in a version of the same way they free the slaves from from the colonizers the colon, colonizers and shit that, that's you know what i'm saying fact. So That's protect your heart is like the same concept, but it's like now they're like, fuck it, we're not going to enslave them and shackle them, we're going to shackle their minds. So protect your heart is a thing that says, well, you know what? The mind is something that could easily be shackled, but your heart could overpower that. So you need to lock in with your heart. You need to lock in with who you are. You need to lock in who you, with you because the power, same power, the same energy that that power, dumb motherfuckers in 1804 that made them say, you know what, we're going to go out there and coup it, we're going to take right. everything back. That same energy is in all of us, right? Now, so how now, do we ignite that We energy? wake that shit up, protect your heart. How That's do we why. wake it up? Wake that shit up. Say, how do, simple. What's wake. the process? Is the process is this, number one. You must realize who the fuck you is. If you still think you're a motherfucker running around trying to 
be rich and get generational wealth, then you're in the wrong fucking game because that's the game. That's the game. That's their game. And you want to play their game, you're going to fucking lose. So what's I, our game? Our game is really, we are spirits, bro. We are gods of this motherfucker, right? We say we we say it happens, right? We believe in the shit that we do and it makes it happen. We have so much proof in the way that we move as a unit. So there's no way a motherfucker tell me they don't know and they don't believe because we done did this shit in the past. So... Our power lies in unity. Our power lies in this love that we don't have for ourselves, and it lies right in that motherfucker right there. Because once you start loving yourself a certain way, then you start understanding that the same love get reciprocated to your brothers and your sisters. And then when you start understanding how energy works, right, and that you are energy, right, then that what you put out is exactly what you get. That's, that's the real. That's motherfucking law of the universe. So now what happens is this. Everything that you say towards somebody else is actually saying it as a reflection of yourself. So now think about talking shit about yourself, down batting yourself. Why this person got this on? I don't know this. Anything that you could say about somebody that you could conjure up from your freaking tiny ass little fucking brain that is not conducive to growth, that shit is all about yourself. So that's, now, that's deep, right? so now, once you understand that, now you watch your mouth. Then, once you understand how your words is so powerful, it creates your own reality. Then Absolutely. you try to talk words about the powerful. shit that you want to create Very in your powerful. reality, and not the shit that you don't want to create. So now, the power of being who the fuck we are is right here within ourselves. We just not using it, and actually, we are, but we're using it to fucking hurt ourselves and each other instead of fucking using it to fucking uplift each other. So. Understanding that shit is the key. Knowing that shit is the key. Becoming that shit is the right key. Now, and we need to be at that point right now. There's no other time because right now is the time. Because we got so much help from so much other ways and so much other things that's here to help us right now. And motherfuckers need to take advantage of that shit. And yeah, they here. The motherfucking you know UFOs what? is here. Nigga, they here. Nigga, they here. Listening to you. <laughs> listening to you talk. Listening to you express yourself. <laughs> It shows that you have a whole lot to share. Yeah. You have a whole lot within you to give to the world. Shit, Lord. And you know what I'm saying? We probably have like 20 minutes left. I'm we won't be able to cover lot, all of that right now. But now let me... let me, let I call me the decoder, right? The decoder, right? The decoder, right? The decoder, right? Code writer, decoder, right? Okay. A code writer is a code writer. is a person that writes codes for computers, right? Absolutely. Now, a computer is... You know what it is, your phone, your PC, and all the other shit. Now, all this shit is a model that is outside of you that was taken from the model that is you. You, the biggest, dopest computer ever created on Earth. That's can only fact. be programmed by sound and vibration because you are just that sound and vibration. And your five senses are the entry to those things. Now, we are that sound and vibration, and we need to understand how we there. can control ourselves. He's going there. We can control it all through that process of who we are. So, become that shit. Can I ask you a question? I'm going to ask you two questions. That's now, I, previously you said forget the industry after industry, but you can't deny you were in the industry. Now, what were your biggest challenge while you were in there? Because now I see you a whole different entity. Uh, you you expressing your your love and yourself different. But let's uh, let's take a, let's wait Biggest to challenge, yeah. man. How, what the was industry. your biggest challenge in terms of being a zoe in the industry? Or being a zoe, being no, a zoe in the industry back then. Yeah, yeah. I'm challenge. saying being a zoe is not. See, and being me, being who I was in the industry, like I was a zoe in the industry. Everybody knew that, but it wasn't. It wasn't like easy to find other zoes in the industry. Why? Because the motherfuckers was undercover, really. You know what I'm saying? They're still the first cover. person, yes, I say, they are. one of the yes, first person that the the fir one of the first people that kind of like literally that didn't know I was a zoe when they found out it was it's been loves ever since was Wyclef and Jerry. One day. Really? Hell yeah! Like dumb motherfuckers is like when I met them, they was just going into the um, first Carnival album from Wyclef. Okay. Right when I met them, it was just finishing up Fuji shit. And I missed that whole thing. And I was working on, what video I did for Clef? Because I was working on videos and I did a video for Clef. He was on the video that I was on or whatever. <laughs> you listen, and I was you, talking to this every nigga, time right? you open your mouth, so, you, you said something <laughs> out there, you surprised me. So I was you did to, videos also? Yeah, I did, bro, I did over 50, I casted all these shits. I did, I casted all these, all these directors after Belly, really? after Belly, my okay. first video was React by Onyx. And then I did, 
And then I went on. I did a shitload of videos. My resume is long with the videos. This, this guy, this guy's deep. <laughs> My resume is long. Could, at some point, at one point, between me and you, right? At, some, at one point in the industry, there was no Instagram. So if you want to get with a girl, if you want to know about a girl, there's no way you can know about a girl because there was no there was social, social media, media like okay. that. So you had to. Do I was video. the social media. I had a database of every single model in the country, and so I used I to travel to go find the, the dopest City, girl. This guy, so heavy. I could bring him back. All my souls, he's heavy. <laughs> he's a heavy one. So, he, he so I could bring ton. him back. Okay. So, but then, like niggas don't talk about that because when it comes to videos and the industry, and we talking about the fiftieth anniversary of hip hop, right? Absolutely. Videos was one of the main things that was used. To promote the music. Absolutely. Videos Those wasn't videos. shit without no model, God. Without no beautiful models. Oh my goodness. Do you know how hard it was to find a beautiful model? Well, you had to go to Brazil. <laughs> you had to go to you're right. You had to go to Brazil. There you go. Or you had to come to me. Or other there was wow. three other agents in New York that was just popping just like I was around that time. And it was just that. You know really? what I'm saying? And one of them I give my give my boy a shout out. Um it was what? It was Yuli. Yuli, Yuli, that was one of the casting directors. He had a lot of dope-ass girls. Let me ask you a question. What was that? One of the as far movies. as producing these videos, what role did you play aside from casting? Were you one of the people that actually did the editing, the production, or you, you led the production? You were executive. You mm. kind of give the direction. Nah, I, 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 I kind of assisted with some um, treatments because I used to write treatments. So you write then. the treatments. I used, to, I used to write treatments, but I that wasn't the thing that I was really known for. Like I was really fixated on making sure that the dope is... Because you got to understand, bro, like back then, you know how there's a blonde girl on every block now and there's a Rosa Park or Rosa... Whatever, whatever chick that's fly, there's a fucking version of her everywhere in the hood. Right now, back then it was no, just no. one fucking blonde chick, it was one, one redhead chick, chick one big yeah. butt chick, one. It was that one chick that that's was right. that only one that was the go-to now you person. You can find many of them. You can find many of them okay. because that was her style. That was her. Okay, she be, she was the person that was known that was for her that. Aura. That was her aura. Okay, and then okay. we exploited that aura. Now every girl in the country started seeing that aura, they, they, and now they, they want to be. They replicated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's dope, man. So you basically you were the the artist. You were the artist <laughs> of the whole production. <laughs> so they would come to you because you had the vision. Well, nah. They used to call me the gatekeeper, man. The they, gatekeeper, they used to think okay. I was a pimp because I used to have all the girls. But really. <laughs> so now is this okay? Another question. <laughs> was this? That was casting director date. Let me ask you a question, because I met you with this handkerchief around your face. Yeah. Was that before that or after that? That was way before that. So when did you pick up the handkerchief and started covering your face? That was after... That was like after 20 years After 9-11? Ago. Yeah. After 9-11, it was this. I was taking pictures like this, because I don't know why. For some reason, I just start, did, started not... Because I used to be taking a lot of celebrity. You know, I used to be around, red carpet and all that shit. So I used to always want to not show my face too much, because I used to be around so many celebrities, and I used to see how they didn't have no life. They, okay. No private life. But uh, what... what? Okay, so that's one of the reasons why you picked up the handkerchief. That's one of the that's reasons. That's one of the but, reasons. So but, how yeah. long ago was that? That was about 20 years ago. 20 was, years ago, you've been walking around like this? Yeah. It's so crazy. I know you, but okay. I don't know how you look like. Yeah, but a lot of people say the same thing. If you, a lot of people say that shit because it's been like that for the long Yo, time. we talk on the phone. I used to be weird. I now come I'm not to an weird. event. I came to one event, and that's all I know. Yeah. Well, this what does it me. take for someone to know the real you? The spirit. The moment. It's not me. It just happens. And 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 then res there's restrictions, man. But you know that's kind of like scary, though, right? It is what it is. What's so scary about what? It's now when I say scare, it's like a air of suspense. I don't. I I'm cool with the dude. That's the homie. I got thing. a hole in my face, bro. A big hole, like you can see my teeth. No, you don't stop. <laughs> nah, you play a game like you play, he acting like this is the Batman. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's really a character. I like that. This guy's gonna live very long, extremely long, because. He know how to be very <laughs> facetious and have a lot of humor. Uh, that's, that's 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 dope, man. Yeah, so fun. you said another for you to another for a person to see you 
naked. Well, not naked, your face. <laughs> your face naked. Yeah, that is naked. It's like, it is kind of naked. It's like when people say, when people ask me about seeing my face, I'm like, yo, would I, I would never actually see your coochie, especially girls be asking me that shit. It's like, this is like my panty on my face. Okay, Can't so, see my face. Okay, That's how sacred it is. It's as sacred, as, sacred, it's as, it's sacred right. as you keep your sacreds. Let's, you know let's what I'm saying? move away from using, you know, uh, sexual th- terms. Let's just keep it simple. Another, another for someone But to, is that sacred? It's <laughs> as sacred. Another for someone to see your face. Right without no handkerchief on without <sighs> cover. I don't even like to be a subject because I was like, fuck my face, which I want pardon. I mean so um, I mean, um, curse, Yeah, yeah, but I was like one of those the words came out. Oh, give weird. me a second. For those who, whose minds is in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking a sip not, in the I'm middle doing, of the interview. I'm not, I'm not doing no promotion for no champagne. Yeah, so we, we get we, we, we get red cup. We if I, if red, I don't get paid, I'm not putting you on this show. This is a cup. hot show. If you want your champagne or your brand or whatever it is that you got going on, you have to holler at me yep. so I can holler promote him. it for me. Yeah, holler at DJ Script, but I'm not putting. I am drinking champagne. Yeah, I'm not going to mention the brand because I'm not one of those people I who smoke. love showing enough things that I'm not getting paid for. This is hard work right here. This is dope work. If y'all want y'all champagne to be mentioned, holla at me and I will mention it yep. and I have to pay for that. Yeah, and I so, smoke, so holla at me if you want your smoke to be mentioned and you ain't got to pay check, me. Look what I got smoke. on. Look what I got on. Read what I got on. Legal dope pusher. You know why I wore that shirt? Because you're a motherfucking pharmacist. Damn, you just discovered me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, know the, I know those drug dealers. <laughs> listen, damn, I might cut that out. I know <laughs> these. Le- I know these legal drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, when you told me you went into um cannabis, yeah, I'm like, you know, I gotta wear some dope that dope. resonate or that connect with what you're doing. Yep, I'm all so in the you, I have a brand. Yes, it's, it's called like, uh, Legal Dope Pusher. Oh shit, they, that's my brand. Legal like, Dope I Pusher. I like yeah. it. Look, I, you like it? Yep. You see, listen. Once she like it, that's it, it's fire. You know why? Everybody keep telling me keep pushing that brand, and I I don't feel too good about it. It's like it feel like I'm I'm trying to be rich Porter or something, man. But on the on the on the legal side, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You are who you are. Fuck you, that you shit. You are who you are. But since you like it, yeah, man. Street from you. You know what I'm saying? You're a legal pharmacist. Just let him know. Oh that. man, I like that about this guy. He he give his honest opinion. Now my Chanel question: If you didn't like it, would you say so? Hell yeah. Oh, you see, I like that. I like Hell that. Hell yeah. Yeah, I've been, I, you know. I'm always looking for a joke, but don't give me a motherfucking reason to joke you, so don't so, do that. So, oh, you like that shirt too? Oh my goodness. Everybody said they like the shirt except for me. Why am I the most critical? Because you made it. That's how we are. You know what I'm saying? All this, we get critical about our shit. Yo, listen, I hate this shirt. It is what it is. <laughs> the re- well, I have so many of it, and every time I look at it, I feel like pewing because... I'm like, damn, man. Yeah, no I'm, more. He's not going to do that no more, y'all. I'm no, not, because you like it. If if you yeah, like it, protect your not, heart like it. He's not going to do that no more. That means we're going to do a legal dope push and protect your heart. Yo, no you know what I just remembered? Yeah, go ahead. I have a protect your heart website. Okay. How does that tie into legal dope push? Oh, you can sell your stuff on my website. Oh, I like that. You see, this guy's an inspiration. Because I, I started with <laughs> Shopify and... <laughs> You know, I started pushing this thing. Heavy. That's not what I was gonna say though. But he just he just pushed me into that. I, was, <laughs> I had to think. Of, I had to be smart. <laughs> I started kind of quick. Oh, oh, listen, what were you gonna say? Go ahead, say what you I, it don't say. matter. It's, it's, it's whatever what came out is what spirit wanted to come out. It yeah. is what when what I say is what's gonna happen. That's, that's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I that's, started I started pushing this brand about two years ago, and it started catching on. But I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna be real. Growing up in Brooklyn, there's a problem with that. The problem with growing up in Brooklyn is you think you could hustle anything. anything. You think anything just put you in that sh- and then you start hustling. That's a problem. And and that happened to many of us. So the thing is, I'm into clothes. I'm into fashion, just like you. You said you're a stylist. I'm a stylist, too. I'm into fashion heavy because I'm a, I'm a vintage collector. I'm from the... Um, the 80s, um, 90s era, the, you know, Polo Ralph Lauren era. Polo Ralph Lauren. So I, I have a lot of those things, right? 
And I and I got to a point I reached I, I got I got an epiphany. And I'm like, why the hell I keep collecting Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger? And I and I know how to design urban stuff. I'm just gonna design my own clothes. So I started with Legal Dope Pusher. First it was lavish wear. Then, you know, I I I I, I left off from that and then I went on to uh Legal Dope Pusher. And I I did I Feel Rich. The I Feel Rich one, I don't like it at all because every time I wear that damn T-shirt or sweatshirt, I can't, some girl think I got a lot of money, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm ready to give her all my money. So I don't, I just continue to I Feel Rich. <laughs> but because of you, um, we're going we're gonna to go with the legal door pusher because everybody telling me, Scrip, don't stop pushing this brand. Even my producer. Oh, there's another brand for you too. Which one? You should do. I feel rich. It's powering words. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck man. what people See, think. This guy's different. And I know you're scared because that's what it's like. I'm scared because people get fuck what people think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's At right. At the end of the day, because well, I, I would feel that way too. Because that's like that's why I don't tell people what I do sometimes because I don't need people asking me to do shit for them. I get that part right, but at the end of the day, if the, the I feel rich is a whole different situation because. When it comes to clothing and when it comes to words, when it comes to putting power in words, words have so much power, you know. And I, I'm not, I like this man and, right here. This and, guy, and, and it helped people. If you know I'm gonna I mean? listen to anybody, I'm a Tory, I'm stubborn. I'm gonna listen to him. Nah, I'm listen to him. So now, you got, let me say something real quick, right? Because you gotta understand, like the reason why I mentioned after industry earlier is because one main reason. I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm gonna tell you one thing, and it, it kind of goes all across the board. We have a DJ, right? that has kids, right? But plays the rawest, shittiest, wackest music that is con- not conducive to growth or their children. Facts. And then all they're gonna say is, it's not my responsibility what their children listen to. But you playing them songs. But you playing it. So now you're not taking no accountability because why? The check that you're getting is feeding you. Now your excuse is, I gotta feed my family. So on whose account are you feeding your family? On the other families that whose children is listening so to this bullshit? To that, so like, so stuff, now right? what? So now how are we? How are we? Do, how are we as the industry leaders of people that have voice in the industry? How are we helping any community if we are pumping the same dumb shit Wait. in the, in the people's brain? Right, that's you, corrupting you know them into the space that's not allowing us to grow. The little glimpse I got in the, from you know being around industry people, I think industry people are extremely selfish. Yeah, because it's all about the industry. That's why. I, that's why I mentioned that we have to get out of this idea of this fucking industry I think shit. Very selfish. Because many we... of them are very insecure, and some of them they lack in uh, creativity. I really, I really feel <laughs> that, and then I don't get that from just one person. I get that from several. Why? Yeah. Well, you answered the question, so I'm not even gonna a- ask. Yeah, I don't mean, mean, People right? create it. They do what they do. So, so now let's get into what you do. Let's get into what you do. Now, you're an artist. You paint. Yeah. In, in, in my eyes, you're a modern-day Basquiat because yeah. you have some similarities. Basquiat was an actor. You're an actor. Basquiat loved music. You love music. Um, Ooh, I was talking about getting back into DJ. And Basquiat, was, listen, hold up. Basquiat was a DJ. No, I did that. I only said that. About being a I DJ. said that because I'm gonna tell you right now. First of all, I used to DJ in, in college, right? Used I used to, to have a radio station. Go. I used to have a radio station in college, so like a Which real college is that? A Westbury in Long Island, right? Okay. So I used to run a radio station, like a real radio station with program directors and commercials and all that shit. Like I used to run that shit. So now, the, earlier, I'm sitting in the car. And I'm listening to this old fucking school method man and red man. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a flag. Like like yo, I'm like, yo, that used to be one of my illest <laughs> blizz, right? Yeah, I, say, yo, I say, yo, I remember the acapella. Oh, this shit used to be sick. And I'm like, yo, if I take one of this new fucking sick ass beats and I throw that shit on there, yo, I will fuck niggas heads up because I don't think nobody's doing this shit still. So I'm like, yo, and I'm a, and I'm a blend master, bro. I love blends, bro. So yeah, I used to be, yeah, because in, 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 I, in, as a DJ, one of my main things, Used to be the blending, right? I like this. We guy. had our chance of sorrows. I'm a stylist. Many days. A, I'm a Who's that? I'm a DJ. I don't know about that. I'm a DJ. <laughs> now, he 
he kind of fall in line with, with Basquiat. Basquiat did all these things. In addition to Basquiat being Haitian, and he's Haitian. He's a Zoe. Basquiat was a Zoe. But Basquiat was a Zoe Puerto Rican. But this guy's a straight up Zoe. But which, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. So the next question is, when did you, you know, because there's a point you reach, right? And you just made a decision. You just make up your mind like, yo, I'm going to be an artist and I'm just going to start painting canvases. When did that enlightenment happen for you? Believe, believe, believe. All right, so there's a point in my career where I had a sneaker deal, right? And I had he had, a, he had a sneaker deal? Yo, no, hold on. This dude, <laughs> this dude is... Nah, hold on. Stop playing. Yo, who are you, boy? <laughs> like, hold on. Who are you? Benjamin what What Bell. brand? It was my brand. It's called Tough City. And it was in Dr. J, Jimmy Jazz. It was in every I store. think I've seen that, that joint, too. But it was it was really old school. So what happened is this. Really? I mean, what happened? That's what got me. That's a lot of shit happened over there. So anyway, I left. I did when I left. When I left casting. Who, who is this shit right here? I, is this the Oracle? Cause I should have bought that magazine too, because I got a Double XL magazine actually with me on it with Snoop and Game on the cover. Now who the hell is this dude? And it was talk. And then it, it was talking about I'm how. I'm thinking I knew him. <laughs> <laughs> and in a magazine we talk about how the sneaker game is about to change and I was one of the people in there that was part of like the five artists that they picked to, to write about that was really what's the name up. of the sneakers again my my, my sneakers was called Tough City Tough 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 City, tough city. yeah it was a clothing line and Tough it had City a, and, it had, and it, had, it was a clothing line it was rugged it was very it was with the big t-shirt era with the coat you remember those um those those T-shirts with the cereal boxes and it says cornflakes and shit like that. I remember there's a lot like, of wild stuff that happened back. You remember then. that era where it was like all style. about the con the, the 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 that was yeah that was the my graphics with yeah, the, 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 the nice car yeah, jackets and company. all that stuff. Yeah, that was our company. The, the, that was the cereal shit, so. jackets, man. What's what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> like Johnny what Handsome, remember y'all? Johnny Handsome? Yeah. So that the company that that ended up running um um. Tough City was the same people. So I was working with them. So I was actually designing clothes for a lot of those clothing lines. Now, I didn't know nothing about that shit. They actually taught me this shit, and I actually went into it and then studied designing sneakers And because I came in as a custom sneaker designer. So anyway, I had a sneaker deal, and um, that shit was all over the place. This dude had so, everything. So yeah, I went. Yeah, that's it's why I'm like, happy. that's why I'm so lax. I don't care about all this other shit right so now. So when did that's you a, throw yourself into canvases? Like started painting. Canvases happened when I wanted to leave clothing and in and had yeah, in in industry and it was this concept in my mind that says starve their ego and feed their souls, and feeding their egos. Like what I noticed is that when I stopped giving people fly clothes and making them look good, hold on, hold stopped. on, repeat what you said. Starve their ego. And feed their souls. And feed their soul. I'm going to starve your ego, and I'm going to feed your soul, because some of y'all are soulless. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so because the concept of feeding somebody's ego is, I was a stylist. As a stylist, as a person that makes you look good, is feeding your ego, because Absolutely. every time I dress you, 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 you out the there, you, I got the ill, uncut you put the drip so now you the flyest nigga in the room, Absolutely. right? So now, that's what being so now does. that's so now that's that's feeding somebody's feeding ego. Somebody you ego. know what I'm saying? Okay. So now what happened is when I'm not doing that, I don't get invited to the events. So now I'm understanding that okay, cool. So you guys only fuck with me because, because I, was I got that. the drip. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So now I started understanding how the, the dynamic of the industry works. Same thing with the models. When I stop, when I stop providing models the way they want it. Niggas start hey, stop inviting me to the parties because like yo come bring thirty girls I'm like bring thirty girls like how much y'all paying for me to bring thirty girls now nah, don't worry we got bottles at the tables there bro you asking me to bring thirty girls you know how hard it is to get two girls out the house two girls but if you tell and y'all thirty but if you tell them Puffy's gonna be there they're gonna run out the house come and on. they do and you come they do but it's, it has to be some real incentive though you know what I'm saying so I'm just saying like being the person that has to provide the girls you're not getting calls from Puff now you're getting calls from Puff and everybody else down the line that still want that look and I'm like I want you to have that look you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna give you that look you know what I'm saying so that whole concept was like man fuck, fuck that concept of of egotistical I'm the man shit you know what I'm saying cause y'all niggas is y'all niggas is like you say soulless 
So protect your heart. So protect your heart was, was, was to remind people that yo, we do have a fucking spirit. We do have a whole that we all one and we all this and all this shit is coming back. Niggas just know what the fuck love is. A nigga walk in the room and say, Yo, I love myself and I love everybody in here. You know, 20 years ago, a nigga say, I love myself. Niggas look at you, you're a weirdo. Somebody say, yo, I love you. Niggas look at you, you're a weirdo. No, I love you, man. No homo. Like, nigga, fuck you mean no homo, nigga. You love me, you love me, nigga, because I love you too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So now it's easier for people to love before it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? It was a fucking big-ass barrier, which was the ego. You know what I'm saying? Which is dying. I think there's still a lot of ego in the industry. It's very. It's run by ego, so of course it is. It is. It's like I'm tough. I'm the best. I'm the this. I'm the that. I don't know. But it is what it is because that's part of that that competitive nature that humans are fucking built on. But the good (laughs) news is due to the effectiveness of the internet and the efficiency of the internet, these days everybody have a mic in their hand. It's what you do with the mic. In other words, everybody have a platform. Yeah. Everybody have access to a platform. It's, it's not what the same you do no with more. the platform. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. It's the kind of conversations you have. It's the kind of people you deal with, the the quality of people you deal with, you know, what people can learn from you and how you yeah. could, you know, uh, make the world a better place. And like me, for example, I'm very passionate about bringing Zoes together. That's one you of are. the that's one of my passions. You understand what I'm saying? I give you that. That's why. That's why I show up for you because I, I true, I so believe in that. And if yeah, you, you and if you out here doing that shit, I'm gonna support that, that shit. You know what I'm saying? A guy like you, so with this level of experience, the other young souls that's coming up, they need to know you because we're looking for inspiration. Many of us looking for guidance. Many of us looking for someone that was there before. To give us some kind of guidance to, uh, to 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 be able to have hope to make it, you know what I'm saying? So when they hear you, did belly, uh, she got to have it. Kalito's way, Bronx Tale, and a brown whole bunch sugar, best brown, man, brown sugar. God damn, yeah. best man. You were best man. <laughs> you hear this? I wasn't in it. I worked on it. You worked, worked on, on it. it. Yeah. So when young people hear that, not only young Haitians. Oh wait, here's this. Here's a dope one. This is my one of my favorite. One? one of my favorite jobs was the Dave Chappelle show. You and you work with legends and icons. <laughs> that was my first. That was that listen was, when I post that, this up. The first ten episodes of the Dave Chappelle show, I casted that. Listen when I post this season, up, though. and then here Zoe did this. <laughs> do you know how many kids you're gonna inspire? Do you know how many people you ins- you gonna inspire? As a matter of fact, you inspiring me. As a as a as a film producer, as a music producer, you telling me don't quit just by not saying it, but by showing it. You ever heard of Winston Sinclair? What is it? Winston Sinclair. That's, yeah. Nah, who's that? She's a black casting director, and she's the lady that did so much films that was sh- shot in New York from. She worked on everything. I gotta see her face because normally I gotta. I even a face, man. Her name is her name should ring bell in the film. What's the name? Winsome Sinclair. That's who I work for. You work for her. okay. Winsome. That's who did all of them. Winsome Sinclair. Yeah, that was her agency that that did all those films that I was working and, on. And you know what's so crazy? You know my homie Hard Hair and Harry. Shout out to Hard Hair and Harry. Harry, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my and, boy and, Harry. And when I told him about the interview, you he was amazed. And I think I'm gonna see him later uptown. Yes, sir. Uh, you know my homegirl, Mary Mac, Mac, Madonna's DJ. That's my girl. She, there you go. You see, we have to keep this. Yeah. This is extremely important. Love is powerful. Very. Love and is the highest vibration, man. Love is who absolutely. we are, man. Love most, is who we are. Don't let nobody ever tell you nothing that you're a person, that you're a man or a woman or this or that. You are that. Don't get it twisted in the physical form. And but in the spiritual aspect, you are that love. You are that energy. You are that thing inside of this Oh, man, you vessel. sound just like Mary Mack. You know what I'm saying? So you and need to embrace that shit. You sound just like her. She That's her aura. And most importantly, you have love and unity. You can't be stopped. No, man. We can't, can't be stopped, man. We can't, we can't be stopped. So that's one of the reasons why I, I'm like, you know what? I got to find the dopest the flyest young Zoes or the Zoes in the industry and bring them together. I know what I'm doing is kind of like a it's a struggle. It's very challenging because everybody don't have the same agenda. You know, people have their own um, unique agenda. 
like you said, you know, it's it's like an man. industry where everybody want to prove themselves. You know, they can I say something, man? Yeah, go ahead. You ever seen a horse run? Of course. You know, there's other horses running with that horse, and everybody on that motherfucking race got an agenda, and their agenda is to win or catch that rabbit. You know what them horses have? They got this shit right here that says, I don't see no motherfucking nothing but my road and my motherfucking mission and everybody else and their mission, I don't give a fuck about. And that's the shit that a lot of us lack because that's if you're fact. looking at that right there, which is your goal, you got a clear goal, my brother. So it's like, if you're looking at that goal and you say, fuck everybody, bro, you're going to get there a lot faster. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. You know this what I'm saying? This is dope. That's and the dopest thing shit. I ever heard. Word, because the I'm going to use that analogy. Because the real shit is this, right? If, if, you take, if you take power of words, right? If you take every moment, if you take, let's say, three minutes of this talk and you take every two minutes and you take an intention and you put it towards these motherfuckers that are fucking not giving us nothing or that's hating or that's fucking doing a fucked up shit versus taking that same time, putting it towards what that goal is, you find out you're going to get fat there faster. And not only that, the attention to the goal allows you to get to the goal faster. And the minute you turn around and you start looking to the side, what happened to the horse that turned around? That motherfucker starts stumbling because he's going straight yeah, okay. when he's looking to the side. So the thing is, man, fuck all them people, man. You know okay. what I'm saying? Well, this conversation is so dope that I'm getting lost in it. <laughs> I, I love you, know, you too. <laughs> the, the general public asks me questions to ask you. What's the, what's the questions? The, the general now, public. My, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're a dope brother, you know what I mean? Very dope. You're very uh, enlight enlightened and uh, you're very educated and you know what you're talking about. Now, you, you had to protect your heart, which is storming New York City. Everybody wearing it from celebrities to regular people. Now, how did you forge a relationship with, uh, with Jimmy Foxx? For Jamie's family, man, that's all I got to say for that. How long you known him? I've known him for a few years. I've known Jamie. How did y'all start it vibrant? I know you work on the set. I know his family first. Really? That's where I know his whole family, and then I met <laughs> Jamie. So you met him through his family? Yeah. So his family told him about you, and then y'all started kicking it? Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, probably six, seven years ago. Really? That's dope, man. Uh, have you heard anything about him in terms of what happened to him lately? Yeah, he's good. He's good? He's How sure. good is he? He's good. I, he's back on that damn paddle ball or racquetball or whatever dope ass. He got this game that he got in his backyard, so he's back on that shit. Well, that's dope. He's very active, man. That, that's, his, that was his, that's what I think his problem was. He... Overworked himself because that before that shit happened, he was really ODing. Because I literally thought he was in one place, and every time I looked at his damn whereabouts, he was in a different place. So I knew that traveling shit would have got to him eventually. It just came to me, but that's exactly what I thought happened. Well, I've noticed that you did an event at his house. How yeah. was that event? It was dope. He, he sponsored Protect Your Heart Day whenever we do it in LA. That's really? Yeah. So he sponsored the whole Protect Your Heart Day. He paid <laughs> for everything. He's, he's heavy over here. So when we did Protect Your Heart Day, heavy. we did Protect Your Heart Day LA. He, we did it at his crib. And of course, we're going to go back when Listen, we're going to go back. You heard him? We're going to go back. <laughs> and that's a fact. The yeah. whole zone's going to go back. Yeah, but yo, man, you, you're a dope individual. You know what I'm saying? I wish we had longer time. Um, but this was definitely dope. And I'm, I'm, you definitely coming back again. Um, yes. Let the people know where they can find you and oh, what, you, Art. what you're doing right now. Uncut Art, U-N-C-U-T-T, um, A-R-T, Protect Your Heart. Um, right now I'm working out a deal with Target for some merch. I have a water bottle coming out for Juneteenth. I have a couple of Juneteenth things coming out. I'm also having a documentary showing at the at the Magic Johnson Theater on June 3rd. You know we're going to be in the building, right? Um, there's a lot of things happening. Um, just keep up. Hit my IG. Get my IG back up because they got Let me Let them go to the IG again. U-N-C-U-T-T-A-R-T, Uncut Art. What about the website? And, and protect Your Heart. Oh, yeah. The website is protectyourheart.com. I actually have a freaking 
community website for all my conscious brothers and sisters that Listen. are gaining, getting into their conscious self and, and learning themselves. Heart. Go to protectyourheart.com. We com. have a whole community on there. You can sign up, have your own profile. And we're, gonna, we're building community. We're building. we're building community on our website. And I'm so going to be selling out. legal dope pusher on there. Well, about that? conscious dope pusher. Conscious dope pusher, but that is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, we're going we gonna to play it out. Listen, yeah, man. Appreciate we, it. We lounging with Script right now. We lounging. I'm a lounge. Zoe's in the industry. Zoe's Follow in us on Instagram. Also, Script TV, underscore TV, and underscore. Listen, man. We got another dope episode in the book, and we got one coming up next. Yo, Mary Mac, I see you. And script, we out. Hard hand Harry, you know what time it is. <laughs>